Paul, the fallout from last weekend, if that's the right way to describe it, how have you reviewed that and what conclusions did you come to? Um, I can't really say there's been a lot of fallout. There was, a, there was obviously disappointment, but I think when I've looked back at it, which is how I felt on the day, I thought we did a lot of good things. Um, I cannot fault the work ethic of the players. I thought they did, did what we would have wanted them to do. Um, we restricted a, a decent Harrogate team to no shots on goal. Um, barring the own goal, they, they didn't trouble us. So we did some good things. We just lacked that quality in the final third. Um, that, that extra bit of care, that extra little bit of finesse to, to find the right, the right pass, the right finish. Um, and if that's what you have, you don't win games of football and you don't get draws out of them. Um, we made a mistake, they didn't, and we have to take it on the chin and move forward. And the only thing that, that we're focusing on now this week is to try and get a performance at Wimbledon. We mentioned this at the weekend, this calm approach. Everybody's got it. Nobody panics. It's important, isn't it? Well, I think you have to have it because, you know, it's not... Football seasons are never straightforward. They don't go as smooth as you would like, you know... It, it, we would all like to be where Leighton Orient are and probably where Stevenage are as well, but we're not. And there's only, you know, there's only three teams that are going to go up, and then there's four teams below that who will compete for the playoff places. We've just got to make sure we are involved in that seven, those seven places, whatever that involvement is. We've done really well for for 29 games. Now the challenge is: can we keep going? Can we work as hard, if not even harder, than we did over the first 29? And if you do that, then you give yourself a real good chance of success. Now, that's where we're at with it. You know, we, we, we haven't achieved anything. And it's something I've been saying all season. And people might say I'm a miserable sod because I say it. But that's the way it is. The season's 46 games. That's where you get judged. If you are between four and, what is it, four and seven, um, after 46, you then get another opportunity of possibly three more games. And... If you're not in those those top places, then your season finishes and we've got to do everything we can to make sure that we finish the season really strong so that we are involved in those top group of teams. Only the two league defeats at home this season, we could argue about both of them as well because we probably didn't deserve to lose either of those two games. That's the fortress that you asked for at the start of the season. Yeah, I mean, it, to be successful, you've got to do well at home and away. But, but because we are so out on a limb up here, up, up in the north, we have to make it really difficult for, for teams to want to come here. We know from our own experience, from our supporters know, we do a lot of travelling. So on the flip side, they've got to travel a long way to get up here. And um, we've got to make it really difficult. And we have done for the majority of the season. You know, We didn't make it difficult enough for Harrogate. Um, there, was, there was circumstances in the Orient game that affected it. That's no point going over again. Um, but in, in general, we've done, we've done well at, at home. I think we've also done much better this season away from home than we did last year, and we have to keep that going. The next big game is away from home, and then we can then concentrate on the two home games after that. It's probably part of the frustration for everybody uh, against Harrogate was the fact that we've got used to scoring goals with the division's top scorers. To not score it, it comes as a bit of a surprise. Yeah, um, I've got to be honest with you, I don't even think we look like scoring. Um, I had a conversation with Christian Dennis early this week and I said to him, I, th I think if we'd have still been playing on Tuesday, we, we probably wouldn't have scored. It was just one of those days because it just didn't quite happen for us. And it, Sometimes you can actually scrutinise it and get screwed up about it too much, but it was just one of them things. We Consistently, we have produced goal-scoring opportunities. Consistently, we've scored. Um, we just didn't do enough on, on in the last home game to do that. Um, in terms of our set plays, in terms of our crossing, in terms of our final ball, in terms of our decision to shoot from 25 yards or should we get an extra pass in. We didn't do all of those things well enough to earn a result. Um, we did it really well on the Tuesday against Barrow, particularly second half. It didn't happen for us. Now the mentality was the same for Harrogate game. It just didn't happen. Interesting question just cropped up. You're on the AFL podcast with Clem on, on Friday night. He's just asked the question, is there a mentality change between hunting and being hunted and obviously top three we're being hunted is that a factor it certainly is a factor um, it certainly does change uh, change your mentality but the truth is it shouldn't do it's still the same we're going into every game wanting to win um, and for me I still think we are hunting the top two I'm not thinking about 
those hunting us behind. I'm thinking about hunting down those top two. You know, I'm disappointed that Orion got a win at Crew because that puts them another three points ahead, and that's the way my mentality is. Um, I hope the players is uh, is the same. I hope they're looking at that as well, because um, the message is uh, we're not satisfied with what we've done after 29 games. We have to be satisfied when it comes to the end of the season, and that's the challenge. I always think it's. The hardest thing, or one of the hardest things, is working to get to the top. It's even harder staying. You have to do enough to stay up there, and that's what we've got in front of us over the next 17 games. Another warning you've just given out. I mean, yes, we have created a little bit of a buffer zone of our own within the playoffs, but you can go down below mid-table, and everybody will be looking at the playoffs and thinking, we're interested because it is that tight. Oh, it is enough. You know, you've got, they've got teams down as, as far as Tranmere who are they are a good side and they can be involved in it. Walsall, I, I think they've got about three or four games in hand on other teams around us, so they, they can be pushing to get in there. There's lots of teams who are outside of the playoffs who are more than capable of getting into those playoff positions. What we have to do is what I've said all season without sounding like Groundhog Day, we have to focus on ourselves. We have to make sure we do our job properly. And if we win on Saturday, we know that we'll still be third. We may be closer to Stevenage and Orient, I don't know, but we can't affect that. Until we play those teams, we have no effect on them. We just have to keep doing our own job properly. I've asked you this before, do you have to manage this, this, this expectancy that perhaps the players have that they're going to go out and get a result? I don't know if, I don't know if I'm managing the expectation because I think, there are, I think there are a really good group of people that we've got here. Um, we keep having to drive the standards. We keep having to talk about working every day in training. We come in, and we're probably only we're only involved with, with each other on a daily basis for maybe I don't know three four hours a day. So it's not a lot to ask for that three or four hours. You come in and you're totally focused, whether it be your your pre activation work, whether it be the workout on the grass, whether it be your gym work, um, whether it's at lunch that you're eating the right foods and you're getting your vegetables in you and you're hydrating properly we have to be really good for that time that we're in here together and then you go away and you stay professional away from the club and you do things properly so that when we're working we're good and when we come to a match day we can be as good as we possibly can I also accepting that some days it might not happen like it was last Saturday at Harrogate in the Harrogate at home game um, but I think if we do everything we possibly can to make ourselves right, we we'll give ourselves the best chance of being successful. And we're where we are because we've had slaps in the face this season, but we've come back almost immediately. That's why you, you get third place. It'd be good to get back at it again this weekend. Oh, without a doubt, you know we've had a great reaction from. We lost the game at Doncaster on was it New Year's Day? Seems a long time ago that. But we've had a brilliant reaction since then with with the performances and the results. We had a. A bad result last weekend. Um, I wouldn't say a bad performance. Not a great one, but not a bad one. Now we have to just react again. We've got to make sure that the next game we go and do properly and we set ourselves up for two really good home fixtures. We've moved out where they are because of the amount of draws. I'm sure they'll look at them as we do, thinking, oh, we could have had more out of some of those draws, so it won't be easy. No, no, not at all. I think um, I think they've got a good side there. You know, I've watched two or three of their games this week. Um, and it's going to be tough. It looks a lovely little ground, lovely ground to go and be involved in. I've not been there before. Um, so there's a lot of things to look forward to. We have to make sure we put on a performance. Whatever they're going to do, we have an idea of what the shape will be. We have an idea of what the personnel will be. We've just got to concentrate on what we can do because so far this season, that's worked for us. And if we can go and do it again this weekend, then it'll give us a, a, a bit of a leg up to get a result. People talk about them as a team that can play on the ground and play quickly if you allow them to. Is that what you're preparing for this weekend? Yeah, we are. Yeah, they're, they're, a, they're a football side. They don't take chances at the back. They've got experience with the likes of Gunter and Pierce. Um, they've got good forward players with, with Pell and with Davison. They've, they've made a few good signings um, in, in the January window. So we know it's going to be a tough game for us. Um, I also think they'll probably be looking and thinking it's going to be a tough game for them because of what we've done. And it's about who is up for the fight, who's up for the battle. Um, and it's about us making sure that we do all we can. The fans are 857 so far. We're going to get over 1,000 again. I have to say, with the London branch, it's usually around about 80 or 90 of them. So this is a heck of a following from North. 
Wow, I didn't even know that. That is incredible. Um, but again, they, they've been magnificent. They really have. From day one when I came in, um, you know, coming up to nearly 12 months ago when I came in, they've been superb. And the players have given them something to be good about. And the players are giving them that incentive to want to come and follow us. We've got to make sure we put a performance on. You know, the, the big thing out of last weekend was the fans actually stayed with us. It would have been easy for them to have lost their head um, and, and to have you know been critical of the players but they stayed with us and we've got to go and reward them with performances not not just in this one isolated game at Wimbledon but over the next 17 we have to do enough to make sure they have a good end to the season as well you mentioned the blue wall at places like Salford Rochdale crew there's others as well that have, that have slipped the memory there but it does make a difference when you walk out that tunnel and say it doesn't it oh huge it makes a massive difference yeah it does um um, and and we've, as I say, we've got to do all we can to keep them with us. You know, they've 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 stayed loyal, they've stayed um, they've stayed patient with us. Now we've got to push on again. I want it to be seventeen really big performances, and preferably seventeen big results. Nomination for yourself this week and two for Chris. He's with PFA and the same Sky Bet as yourself. That again shows things are going well. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I mean it's. Um, it's testament to work that, that all the staff and all the players have done in the football club. Um, I just think there's a really positive feel about the whole place, and I keep saying it. You know, it's the the shop, the commercial, the um, the, the the hospitality. Everything's really positive. Now, I I get that it comes because there's a good feel because results are right. Um, but without everything going well, then the football club doesn't progress and doesn't doesn't get better. So there's so many good things that are going on at the football club at the moment. There's still lots of room for improvement, and I would I'd keep banging the drum to keep improving us if we possibly can. Um, so the nominations are nice. Um, they don't um, they don't mean you've going to be successful at the end of the season, and that's when I want to get plaudits at the end of the season, whether it be for me whether it be for the football club, whether it be for individual players, that's where you're judged and, and we've got to make sure that come the end of the season people are still being positive about us. We've left it till towards the end this time. Injury update, how's Mox? Uh, yeah, we've got we've got a couple of issues from last weekend um, that we're just waiting to see. Um, it's going to be a late decision um, on Mox and, and others, um, which I'm not going to talk about, but we'll, you know, Depending how the rest of the week goes, we'll we'll see see what happens. Hopefully, everybody will be fit and available. If they're not, the door opens for somebody else, and it's an opportunity for them to stand up. Right. Ask about Jack Ellis. Is, is he any further forward from the setbacks that he suffered? He's joined in training again in the last couple of days, so he's um, he, he's getting there. Um, I, I'll be honest with you, he's trained fully with us this morning, but I haven't been told how he is and and whether there's been any reaction to that. We're just going to keep building him up um, and see how he goes. This weekend's too early for him. He won't be involved at Wimbledon, I will say that. Um, but fingers crossed he won't be too far away. We got a bit of a buzz. We thought we saw Josh heading towards the grass. Is, is that right for him? Yeah, Josh Dixon was out as well today. He's joined in the first... Um, the first he's been doing some passing drills with us, but he joined in as a, as a spare f a floater in a possession today that we did. So he's still on no contact. So it's difficult because... There's an enthusiasm to, to go and tackle everything that moves when you're involved in, in the training sessions, but nobody was allowed to tackle Josh today. And he seemed good, seemed to enjoy it. He'll get a huge lift from being involved in that as well. So hopefully his recovery continues. And we know about your longer-term lads, but I suppose the only other open-ended one was Toby. Have we got anything finalised on him yet? He's got his appointment with the surgeon tomorrow, um, on Thursday, where we'll find out exactly what they're going to do. It's been really difficult getting an appointment for him, but we have managed to get that. So on Thursday, we should get a definitive answer as to what the next course of action will be. Uh, we do think it's going to be surgery, but that's that's only going off what we've we've been told on the scan, and we'll wait and see what they say on Thursday. And just finally, Paul, you're at the Cl Cricket Club last Saturday. You're at the London branch Friday night ahead of the weekend game at Wimbledon. We're just about news for you to finalise a, a fans forum with the fans here at Brunton Park as well for March. These these things again are important to you, aren't they? You like this connection. I think there has to be a connection. You know, it's. Um, I don't normally do things on a Saturday night, I'll be honest with you, but I just felt Carlisle Cricket Club had, had won the league last year. I thought it was important to support that. Um, I, I do think it's important. Carlisle United needs the community, um, so 
if we need them we have to go out of our way to try and help them as well so I'm looking forward to going down to London and, and meeting the London branch hopefully they don't have too many testing questions for me um, same with the fans forum in March that you're right I didn't know about <laughs> um, but no I do think it's important we, we have to put ourselves out there and, and respond um, and when things are going well it's always easy to go out and do it we have to just make sure we keep doing it Thanks,